Hello and welcome to the Buy Low, Sell High podcast for week 10. I'm your host, Josh Shepardson. You can follow me on Twitter where I post as at bchad50. And uh, the first buy low target that I'm going to advocate kicking the tires on is a guy who you're not going to get at a bargain basement price. He is coming off of a big contest, and uh, he does have relatively good numbers for the year. But uh, Mike Evans has been maligned for his half dozen drops in his last contest, does have a couple clunkers on the resume, and is not living up to last year's production standards. And for that reason, I do believe you can get him at a slight discount. I think the threat of Vincent Jackson and Austin Safarian and Jenkins cutting into his playing t- or his uh, targets and touches could also produce a bit of a buy low window. Even though I believe Evans is going to remain the uh, head honcho in that passing game, even when uh, all the receivers and pass catchers are fully healthy, uh, the fact that there is such a stir made over his drops might uh, might discount the uh, cost of acquiring Mike Evans a little bit. But this is a guy who's still on pace uh, to eclipse 1,000 yards receiving this year, and that's despite the fact he didn't play in the first game of the season and posted a goose egg in the second. Uh, He's 18th in the league in targets with 72, so Jameis Winston is having no problem airing the football out to him. And I think that uh, you will see the continued volume. And with continued volume, I think you're going to see continued success. I certainly wouldn't bank on him dropping six passes again, uh, probably ever in his career. So I uh, just imagine what his line would have looked like last week, which was already eight for 152 if he hadn't dropped those six passes. So sky's the limit for Mike Evans, yet I don't think you have to pay an exorbitant price for him. It did cost a lot for owners on draft day. Um, I think that they may view this opportunity after his uh, eight catches for 152 yards in uh, – week nine as an opportunity to sell, but I still don't think they're going to get full value for him. And that's, that's an opportunity that you should be looking to take advantage of as a uh, fantasy gamer. Uh, Next up is Julius Thomas, who is having a nightmarish first year with Jacksonville. You could say Uh, missed time early in the season really only has one good game under his belt so far this year. And we're more than halfway through the NFL season. However, Things look great down the stretch. Got a tough matchup this week against the Baltimore Ravens, but beyond that, all of the rest of his contests, the last six games of the season, are against teams that are allowing uh, top 10 fantasy scoring outputs to tight ends per game. So has an absolutely cushy showdown. And the best part, week 16, you are fantasy Super Bowl in most leagues. He gets the worst pass defense against tight ends in the NFL, that being the New Orleans Saints. The Saints, the same Saints who were just torched by Delaney Walker for a pair of scores and uh, really like Julius Thomas. He's been targeted frequently by uh, Blake Bortles, even if that hasn't really resulted in big production, say, for his one big game. But uh, the fact that he's getting the looks, uh, when he was, even though he was integrated into the offense, few games in, really didn't have a chance to work with the Bortles that much, is is promising. I think as they get on the same page, uh, things get even more promising for Thomas. And I, you couldn't ask, you could not script a better schedule for him down the stretch than what he has. He's got uh, just a cakewalk of a schedule. And because he hasn't produced much, you can get him for probably next to nothing if, if he's not already just available on your free agent wire. Uh, most likely he – is on a team that has another tight end option. So he should be able to be acquired for fairly cheap. And the fact that there are some articles out there, namely one at uh, ESPN, indicating that that Thomas's stock is falling, you don't even have to worry about a lot of uh, propaganda talking up this this schedule for Thomas, you know, artificially inflating his price. Uh, I think he can be had for next to nothing, and if you can get him for that, I think you've got a high-ceiling player that can really make some waves down the stretch. For the sell-high options, uh, speaking of Delaney Walker, a guy who just torched the uh, Saints, I'm going to I'm going to say uh, it's time to move him, and not because I dislike Walker as a player, um, but because I don't think his value can get any higher than where it is right now. Uh, Kendall Wright was absent from the contest in week nine. He will eventually be back. Probably not this week. He practice on Wednesday. Um, 
and he has nursing and knee injury. But when Wright is back, that's one more mouth to feed. Doriel Green Beckham is stepping up as a uh, interesting target in that passing game. Was targeted ten times by rookie Marcus Mariota. Uh, they also had uh, some more help in the passing game last week as well. So uh, I, I do think we haven't really seen this team with their full complement of weapons in the passing attack, and it's benefited Walker because Walker's been healthy. Walker's been the guy that's been targeted. But I think as you see everybody in that passing attack, again, there's going to be a few more mouths to feed. Backfield could get a little bit better as well because Antonio Andrews has looked good in recent weeks, but they're also getting David Cobb back this week. So I'm not sure that the volume is going to be there for Walker as it has been this year. Not to mention, uh, it's worth mentioning, the uh, – Six, he had a 61-yard touchdown grab that was rather fluky in this contest. I mean, you're taking those fantasy points, obviously, but uh, the fact that the pass probably should have been intercepted by one of two members of the Saints. Instead, the two Saints players collided. The ball was deflected to Walker and resulted in a touchdown. It doesn't show up in the box score, but if you saw the highlights, you realize that it was a fairly lucky play, and that line just doesn't look quite as impressive without that 61-yard touchdown grip. So um, not a case of me disliking Delaney Walker. I think he's probably a fringe starter the rest of the year at tight end, but uh, right now he's valued as a slam dunk starter and a top tight end. And if you can get that kind of uh, value for him, namely if you can deal him to the Julius Thomas owner and say a two for two or you're – downgrading to Julius Thomas and upgrading elsewhere. I think that that's a fantastic move to make. Um, I actually own both on the same roster in one league, and uh, I will be shopping Walker heavily while holding on to my uh, Julius Thomas stock. Next player that I'm going to add the case selling high is LaShane, LaShawn McCoy. Shady uh, missed a couple games earlier in the year, has been dealing with a uh, nagging hamstring injury, but – also now has a shoulder injury that Rex Ryan doesn't believe will limit him in Thursday's contest at all. But uh, the fact is he's a veteran back who's carried the ball a ton, and uh, injuries really shouldn't be shocking for a back that's that's taken the beating that McCoy has in his career. Um, I'm not going to predict that he's going to get hurt. I don't anticipate on that, but um, I think it's tough to expect him to be 100% at any point the remainder of the season. It's just too grueling a game, and when you're already nicked up, you're probably going to stay nicked up. But more importantly, Carlos Williams has looked like the better back in that backfield. Uh, there's no way that I see Rex Ryan uh, moving McCoy to the secondary role behind Williams. That doesn't mean that Williams' role can't increase on the team, that you can't that, that Ryan won't get more touches to the rookie Carlos Williams, um, or that Williams won't steal the goal line touches. I mean, Williams has had a nose for the end zone, scoring a touchdown in every single ga game that he's played this year. He's the bigger back. He looks more explosive. He looks the part of a guy who can be a goal line vulture. So even though Shady McCoy does have a track record of finding the end zone, don't be surprised if uh, – Carlos Williams ends up vulturing some touchdowns down the stretch, and the fact that he's been the more productive back could end up seeing something like a 50-50 split in that backfield or pretty close to it. Uh, McCoy, solid pass catching back, so he'll, he'll have that working in his favor. And really there aren't a lot of uh, RB1s that are going to get uh, much higher workload than McCoy, but uh, it's tough to envision his value being higher than it is right now. He's coming off of a 100-plus yard rushing effort. He is mostly healthy, healthy enough to play, and uh, I think now is the time to cash out on him. Uh, the fact that Carlos Williams has looked so good, didn't miss a few games, so he should actually be fresh down the stretch because of those missed games. Uh, kind of a, a, an odd way of looking at things, but those, those missed games could prove to be beneficial for the rookie since – uh, he's unlikely to hit that rookie wall now that uh, he's had that breather due to the concussion that he suffered a few weeks ago. But uh, I would cash out on McCoy at this point. Uh, maybe a guy that you could look to cash out on McCoy for is Lamar Miller. Uh, Miller is a buy high for me. I see a guy who's played really well uh, since – Dan Campbell's taken over as the head coach for the Dolphins. Uh, he's eclipsed 100 yards from scrimmage in three or four contests with uh, Campbell coaching the team. Hasn't rushed for over 100 yards in his past two, but he was the leader in uh, receiving yards and reception or receiving yards last week while reeling in seven grabs for the Dolphins. So game flow really shouldn't concern you with Miller. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to run the ball to be effective. Also an effective pass catcher. 
Uh, so he does a little bit of it all, and he has a nice schedule for the most part. Does have a couple tough matchups down the stretch, namely the Jets, Eagles. Uh, the Ravens also aren't the easiest assignment for uh, fantasy purposes. But uh, weeks 14 through 16 set up really nicely for the Dolphins. Facing the Giants in week 14, they've allowed the 10th most fantasy points to opposing running backs. The Chargers in week 15, who have allowed the most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. And the Colts in week 16, who have allowed the 8th most fantasy points to opposing running backs. So if you're a team that uh, already has or is knocking on the door of sewing up a playoff spot, Lamar Miller is a guy that you can invest in now. And uh, he could pay off big time down the stretch with that, that trio of games where he – most of your fantasy playoffs, really, most fantasy playoffs start in, in week 14 or 15 and the championship game being in 16. And, and you couldn't ask for much better a fantasy schedule for him than that. And uh, that's going to wrap things up. Get out, work the phones figuratively or perhaps literally uh, in your league and, and try and make some moves – Try and capitalize on, on these opportunities to improve your team and uh, really gauge where players are on the value spectrum and uh, get get your roster built and ready to win some contests. And uh, if you're one of those teams that's, that's knocking on the doors of the playoffs, get yourself ready to win when it, when it counts, when, when you can make that money in your fantasy leagues or when you can win that pride by winning that uh, – that your fantasy league. So get out there, get get on the horn, find out what it's going to cost to to get some of these guys, what it's going what you can get in return for moving some of them at peak value and uh, get on that and uh, also get on fantasyfootballcafe.com where we've got podcasts like this one, great articles and a very active fantasy forum with some knowledgeable fantasy football enthusiasts. Until next week, good luck.